This is Mary at the Marriottier, and I have my tablet here. I'm watching my stream on my tablet so I can make sure it doesn't do a disconnect. Let's set it over to the side here. And I am going to do a final walkthrough flip of the little fabric art journal that I am creating for Care Heart. Hashtag DAFI, the Defy Auction Disabled Artist Foundation, Inc. Every month, every second sat week, every second Saturday of every month, Carehart has an online auction of all sorts of art yummies. And uh, she does this to support disabled artists who are not able to access and get items that they need to be creative with. And you can find out all about it in the description box below. I also want to thank Kathy at Kathy's Worlds and Friends. There is a link to her channel in the description box below because she started all of this. <laughs> I mean, she didn't start the Disabled Artist Foundation, but she asked several artists to create projects if she would mail them kits. And I was one of the ones that she asked. And she sent this little fabric book and laces and fibers and all sorts of goodies. So... I have had fun over the last week, week and a half. You can find all of my videos creating this little fabric, fabric journal in a playlist. And that is also in the description box below. So let's get started. I'm going to do a flip through. And let me sit down here. Okay, let's start with the back cover. <laughs> let's start at the end. Yes, let me get my my phone out here so I can watch my tablet so I can watch. There. Oops. What did I do? Come on. Yeah. Well, set up it's always it's not easy to get set up until after i've gone live with this all right i think i can see me now uh, let's turn off chat because this is an unlisted video so nobody's in here talking but me <laughs> so yeah let's start at the end this is the back cover this beautiful applique lace rose came from Kathy on here, this white one, and of course the entire little fabric journal. And I, I tell you, you can't see the journal. The journal itself with no decorative elements was beautiful. But of course, we aren't happy with that, are we? It measures approximately, let's do some measuring here. Uh, well, we've got all of the the extras here, approximately seven by, and I'm counting the end of the lace to the end of the lace. Oh, maybe about eight and a half this way, and that's counting this this lace here. Uh, probably more like six by eight and a half, something like that for measurement. And I have a strip of rose cameos here and I don't know if you can see them very well but between each rose cameo I have little fabric roses those came from Kathy on both the top and the bottom of course what you see in here are vintage handkerchiefs and we'll get to those when we do the pages down at the bottom here is some beautiful white white and I call this music lace because I wish you could see this uh, if if you could just see it I wish you could feel and touch it it's musical notes and then on the bottom here are some little embroidered daisies just beautiful just beautiful 
So, now Kayla, let's flip over to the spine. And here's that really fun, huge, big, <laughs> multi-mixed media tassel. So fun to do this. I have string beads and seam binding and threads and tape yarns and it's just a bunch of yumminess there. And when I made this, oh here, I have a, a little charm piece, a little dangly piece that I got at Hobby Lobby. I always buy these when I see them on sale. I think I paid between 40 and 60 cents for these things when they go on sale. And I just, I buy them and then I keep them and they find a home eventually. Now it has a bow up here and I did secure that with glossy accents so that should not come out. It has an organza piece up at the top. And then I filled in this gaps on this tassel because when I sewed it on, it is sewn on attached and there's some gaps in there, but I just tied and it's just gaps where, you know, the tassel meets the book, but I just tied ribbons onto that and it fills out the tassel on both sides very nice. I'm very happy with that. When I made this tassel and before I had this book filled up to capacity, I said this tassel is big and clunky. It's going to be way too big for the journal. But no, 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 no. After you fill up this journal, this tassel just fits. And I am really happy with how this came out. I did do on Saturday, um, I'll try to remember to put a link to it in the description box below, a little project video of how I create my tassels. And it's basic tassel making technique. Uh, nothing special except for I show how I gather up all my yarns and threads and little pretties to put on it. So here's the front cover. The front cover is repeating these cameo roses on the top and the bottom with the little fabric roses sewn in between. And the spine, underneath the spine, this piece is a real pretty lace fabric like you would find on formals or, or bridesmaid dresses, that type of thing. Um, and I repeated the same thing on the front here. Underneath of this is a crocheted piece. Under here, a snippet of it, of netting and crochet. And it really just fits. And here's a butterfly, a silver butterfly on the front. And as I was going through all my little bits and bops, my broken jewelry pieces, I ran across this little beaded turtle. Now you're getting my heart. You're getting my heart because I have always loved this little beaded turtle. He came in a bag or a bottle or a, something of broken jewelry. And it's very well done. Whoever beaded this did an excellent job. It's attached with a little safety pin. Even the little feet here have little pink toenails. He's got pink toenails. So you're getting my heart. But I, I tell you, I put it on here and I'm going, this little turtle belongs on here. He just belongs there. So he's going to a new home. Whoever, whoever wins this journal in the auction. Please take care of him. I, d I haven't named him, so you can name him. I, I, uh, he's got a little pink nose, too. <laughs> so he's just cute. And then the darker colors, I don't know if you can tell, they're kind of a maroonish color. And then up here, I have a little cockatoo pin and the butterfly, and then kind of a, the butterfly setting on some more of this lace fabric. And I will say, this is not lace that you would make a undergarment from. This is lace that you would find on a formal or a bridesmaid's dress. It's a very beautiful lace. Then I was going to tie each page closed. And that would make a nice closure for this journal because it's a fat journal. Look at how fat this is. Look at this yummy up here on top. Um... But I decided not to. I made little fabric tabs. I had some of this really pretty pink and blue, light green um, seam binding, little floral. And I just made a tab and I attached it with a button here. 
and a button over on the other side. So I'm very happy with how this journal turned out. Let me tell you, when you make something, any one of you, and you make it and you go, wow, I would, I would buy this for me. When you have a hard time letting go of your creation, and I do on various things, and I look at this and say, I would buy this for me. You know when you can say that and when your heart says, oh, I want to keep it. <laughs> you know that whatever you did, your creation is a success. So here's my little journal. I might have to secure this little flower a little bit more. It looks like he's peeking out. I'll do that before I send it off. But you flip to the first page. Try to flip with the little tabs over here. Flip to the first page. And here we go. This is a vintage hanky. It's blue roses. And you can go back through. There's a playlist in the description box below. Go back through there and you can see how I attached these vintage hankies. I attached them with a product called Steam and Seam. And so these are ironed down. And I'm really happy with that product because it holds everything very secure. There's a little pocket in here. There's nothing in that pocket. But if you ever wanted to put anything in there, you could. I didn't because I put all this decorative little cluster here. Some beautiful dark blue lace down here that came from Kathy. It just fits with this vintage, nank, uh, vintage hanky. Then in, inside of it, inside of the pocket, I have a bobby pin embellishment. I, yeah, I have to make some bobby pin embellishments for these. But what I like about the bobby pins is they have a long reach. Uh, if I did this with a paper clip, I would be... I don't know, I'd have to put it up here or maybe somehow hook it on to this. I'm very happy with the book. The, yeah, and you need to get the bigger, longer, what, three-inch bobby pins. And then I always open it up before I put it back on. But this is a little postcard. Then this is a, a real postcard. This is not a copy. And it says, so much I miss you every day. I just cannot tell you how on postal cards, but I could show you if I just had you now. And it's a little Dutch, uh, little Dutch children there. And you turn it over. And what I really like about this on the back, excuse me, I only have two hands. It's got the postmark. It's dated 1915, but look, it's signed Papa. It's signed Papa to Veronica. So Papa's missing his little girl. Don't you just love that? It says, hello, Veronica. I received your letter. I am pleased to know you are having a good time, Papa. And then there's an in care of there. So I just love that message. It's, Papa is missing his little girl. <laughs> so that just belongs in here. And then I just used my bobby pin to clip it down to the folded part of this hanky. And I did the same thing over on this side, another bobby pin embellishment. You open it up and I do have clipped on here um, with one of those kind of light bulb clips, uh, a button card, but I'm not gonna take it out because I would have to unclip everything. But it's, I love these button cards because they're, they've got floral on there and that just goes with my entire hanky theme here. And this postcard, talking about going with it, um, the colors on this postcard, the colors on this postcard just fit. Very colorful, floral, spring. And on here, this is another sweet message. I'm going to read it. This is to Mrs. Martin, and it's dated 19... I can't read the rest of it. But let's just say around 13 or 14, it might be 19. Oh, it's 1910. It's dated up here. April 7th, 1910. April. So we're in the month of April. So there we go. 1910 to, to 2020. This postcard is 110 years old. And this one 
is 105 years old. So you are getting some value if you purchase this. And that's what I wanted this journal to be because I know I watch these auctions and some of you pay a pretty good price for your items. I mean, it's not outrageous. Care is very fair. A lot of the auctions start out at a dollar, but uh, by the time the bidding gets finished, I just want you, when you put down your money, I want you and receive your item from me that I create. I want you to say, oh, wow, look what I got for what I paid. This is worth it. And that's why I stuffed this fabric art journal. But this is another sweet message. I'm going to read it. It says, my dear Mrs. Martin. Oh, it's, uh, it's, I guess you, I won't read. I'll just say Madison. It's not Madison, Wisconsin. There are several Madisons. Um, kind of hold that. <laughs> kind of hold the state here. But it says, I wonder if you remember a little girl who used to love to come to your house to play with your kitten um, in those happy, uh, carefree days of long ago, who then answered to the name of Anna Mary and Millie, I think it is. I can't read that last word. I am that little girl. <laughs> gray-haired, let's see, gray-haired woman now with a married daughter who comes on this postcard to give you joy on your birthday, to give you joy and birthday greetings and congratulations on this, your 83rd birthday. May all your days be filled with peace and loving wishes from your old friend and neighbor, Anna Mary Robbins. And then there's the last name. So here we have a postcard sent from Papa to his little girl, Veronica. And here we have a little girl who grew up, now has her own daughter, but she used to run over to the neighbors and play with the kitties on the front porch. And she sent it to her neighbor, who is now an 83-year-old lady. So how precious is this? How precious, just, those, just these postcards, and these are original. These are original postcards. So how fun these are. Now I'm gonna put this in, and again, I would say if you win this fabric journal, you will take this off, just unhook the bobby pin before you put it back in, and it's much easier to slide back in rather than trying to hook it as you put it, uh, unhook it as you put it in. And these are embellished with a little bit of a little bit of ribbon here. Some uh, this is a fabric leaf, a white fabric leaf, and some floral trim up here with little pearl beads. Now I guess I'm gonna I should probably attach that further down. Let's let's attach it further down here. There we go. Okay, so and then here are the pockets, some little fabric clusters with the trim with the pearls in there, little white bows here and here, and here's the page tab to flip over here. So let's go to the next page. Now this page, how fun this was to do. This is a beautiful lavender finching chanky, and this wide lace came from Kathy. It just fits, and I love how the lighter lace and then the darker lace here and then the music lace. I love how the lace layers at the bottom of this page. I have some little bows here with ribbon coming down, little buttons on the page tabs. Oh, you want to see inside? What I've done here is I've made some fabric washi. Now I'm not gonna take this out because, but these strips are not cut here when you open them up. They're probably about 10, maybe, well, let's see, doubled here, this one. Yeah, about 10, maybe 11 inches long. And uh, let me show you a piece of washi tape here. 
this is my own washi tape. But what you do is you can cut this washi to fit your needs. And it's a piece of fabric and it's attached to double-sided uh, carpet tape. I learned this from Rosemary Morris who does wonderful, wonderful journals. Just takes your heart away to watch Rosemary work. So I have two bundles here of washi tape and they just fit right into this little pocket. Two of them and I, I don't push them all the way down because these are folded and where this doubles I like to have it give this journal some bulk up at the top so all the bulk is coming in the middle of the journal. Over on this side, of course, we have the little the little bow and the ribbon coming down, the little page turner with the button, and inside of the pocket, we have a little mini journal. Little tassel here, I found this myself, and some floral fabric embellishment with broken jewelry put on there. And instead of wrapping the closure around on the side here, I did it vertically. And that's so it won't wrinkle up this beautiful trim. This trim here, let's open this up. This trim I purchased at last month, the month of, the month of March, uh, Defy auction. So you can get some, I think I got about two yards of it. You can get some really nice things at the auction. So, and it is tied or taped down over on this side. So with the double-sided carpet tape, the washi tape that we made, this was put on with, with washi tape. This was ironed on up here. So I have my ribbon coming out this way. And when you tie it, do not go this way. Because see how it'll wrinkle things up? Go vertically like this. Uh, a couple times to tie it. And then I just take it and put it under, under like this. And loop it through and make a little, a little tie there. Well, you might have to loop it more than once. Uh, I'm not going to tie it tight because I want to open it up and show you the inside. So on the inside, this fabric here is sort of like an upholstery fabric. And that came from Kathy. This piece of fabric here is Tim Holtz fabric. And that also came from Kathy. Over here, I have the inside uh, piece of a quilt block that was in a needle craft magazine. And as you go through here, the rest of it is scrapbook. Well, no, this is from a hanky book here. These are little vintage hankies. I have a, a book of vintage hankies that I'm using in my art journaling. So, and then I have several pieces of just different papers, mostly scrapbook papers. These papers are not vintage. I doubt that anybody will be writing in this, but you certainly could. And uh, let me sign this in here. Let me sign it right now. Maybe I'll sign it on the back sheets. Right in here. Sometimes I forget to do those things. And it'll probably soak through to the back there, but that's what happens. <laughs> And I am the Mary, M-E-R-I, Atelier, A-T-E-L-I-E-R, which is a Latin French word, French Latin word for studio or workshop. The Mary Atelier. And then, of course, the back is the other side of that Needlecraft magazine, a quilt block. Really a pretty quilt block. How many stars? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, an eight-sided star. So um, I was going to put a piece here, but I decided against it. It just rests that way. And let's close it up vertically. Just bring it around, bring it around. This one you can pull a little tighter because there's no ribbon down at the bottom, no lace. And then bring it through this way. Kind of. Pull it 
and make a little make a little knot here not a big a knot just a little loop a little loopy tie there we go and then it fits right back inside of its pocket over here flipping to the next page using your little page tab flip over and this was the pocket that was fun to do. Let me tell you, it was fun. <laughs> I had started these tags several months ago, and I never finished them. Now I know why they go in this journal. But let's talk about them later. This is a vintage blue rose hanky again, the little fabric tie with the button, and it opens up like this. Now, did I put anything in there? I did. Look. There's some pearl buttons, some vintage. That's real. This is not a copy. I got this at the little antique store. I did a an antique um, video a few weeks ago. That's where I got that. So that fits in there. And then this flap opens up. And yes, I no, I don't have anything in here. This is just rest that way. I took some of the things out and... Uh, I, you're getting them, but I took them out because it's just so much bulk here. But it just flaps down like that. A little ribbon tie with a little flat back pearl. And another one here. Now, Lucia McGill, who is on YouTube here, sent me these wonderful, I guess it was gift wrapping, of these vintage ladies. And several months ago, I was started making these tags. There are some painted dictionary paper on the bottom. This is just craft paper. And uh, then I put a strip of ribbon. Then I put the vintage lady. Put a little strip of uh, this type of kind of a, I think this came from a scarf. I don't know what to call it. It's probably some sort of a polyester cotton blend. Fabric down there and the little vintage lace here. And you will get this vintage lace here too. And well, you'll see it later. <laughs> so, and the little quote says, the art of fashion is a joy. So I have put two in this pocket right here. Yes. Two. Now I might have to put them in together here because of the buttons. Yeah. Just fit them in there. They'll go in there. They'll go far enough down. To, there we go. Now on the other side, I have this beautiful, and I do believe I got this at Hobby Lobby. I purchased this. And it has a little pearl, flat back pearl there. And it opens up. Same technique as this one does. And inside, I have a page of those hankies from that little handkerchief book and this one happens to be all about animals it's got a wonderful little <laughs> dog with a hat so cute and a little uh, hot dog hound dog dashing dog there on these hankies so this is a little scotty dog and I think this is a little bulldog here and then inside is a large hanky with animals all around so those are fun. They're just plain fun. Oh, what else is in here? Oh, yeah. This, this I pulled a piece of remnant trim off of, and I didn't throw it away. See, it says remnant, three yards at, and I think that was 30 cents a yard. TGNY for fashion fabrics. So I just tied a little bow here, put one of these little vintage ladies on there. How fun that is. So keep these type of things. Don't throw these away because you can make really creative tags with them. So that goes back in here. And it's probably best to put them in horizontally so that the flap will close. And then we have another flap down here. And I have more handkerchief ephemera. You can call this handkerchief. I think this went so well because this is what I covered my fabric book with vintage hankies. And these are all Valentine hearts. A few shots from Cupid's bow here. This is a circle of hearts, silhouettes of hearts, and a whoosh around the, a 
a whoosh, W H O O S H, a round heart. It goes shh. They're calling that a whoosh. And then on the back is a beautiful photo of a venting tanky. So that goes in there. Just kind of slips back in. Close the, the flap. And this flap closes over that. And then I have two more. I don't think I, oh yeah, I, no, I don't have anything else in there. Um, two more of these vintage, the art of fashion is a joy. And this is painted dictionary page. I have an old dictionary that when I have extra paint left and I don't want to throw it away, I swoosh it on those dictionary pages and then I can use them in my art. So this one has gold on it and this one, this one has a lavender and gold on the background. Little ribbon and the vintage lady and a button and down here is lace and some of this same um, this came off of a scarf, these tag ties. I think it's more of a polyester. I don't believe it's silk. Same thing over here. So both of these go back in here like this. Ooh, I need to put my I need to put my little hankies back in here, don't I? There we go. No, I don't fit in like that. Maybe down a little more like that. Yeah, you have to get them to fit in right. They kind of come off over into the side here, but that's okay too. And just flop it over. And now turn to the next page. A little tab down here has a pearl button that's kind of hidden down there. Got to have some hidden joys in there, don't you? Little cameo roses down here. To... Now these have pockets. But I really did, they're attached here, but I did not put anything in these pockets again because it's so bulky. In fact, I think I had things in it, but I had to take them out again. Here comes a train. Here comes a choo-choo train. Now over here, we have some cards and photos on the next page. And this page was created with two hankies. One with a lot of lace trim. It was a white hanky. And I folded them up, made pockets out of them, and this other one was a lavender hanky and uh, had some graphic roses on the background. But it all turned out, and look at this lace. I have to tell you, you guys are getting my heart. You're getting my heart because I was hoarding this ribbon, this ribbony lace down in here at the bottom. I was hoarding it. Somebody sent this to me in Happy Mail. I don't know who it was, but what a perfect way to pass it over long in a journal that you're donating it for a defy auction so but you're getting a piece of my heart <laughs> okay and here's another heart here this is little ricky it's written up here this is a photograph of ricky in 1953 november of 1953 i have no idea who ricky is but i love this photo the minute i saw it i've sketched him a couple times uh, but it's time for him to go find a new home. So he jumped into this journal. He says, I belong here. And here's another little boy. He's got little shorts and suspenders on. He's so cute. Looks like the chair here is, this probably is around March, I would say. Around March, because it looks like they're outside and the chairs are tipped over. Maybe it rained or something. So... Uh, I can't tell. You can't tell because these are vintage black and white photos. But they're original photos you're getting. And the same way with this one. This is one of my favorite photos. I just I just found this a couple weeks ago, but I love it. It's an old vintage photo with ladies sitting in the car there. They love their cars. Back then, going for rides was a, a big thing to do. Going for rides was a big thing to do. And here they are piled into this <laughs> convertible car, <laughs> old model. It's probably late 20s or late early 20s, late late teens, I'll bet you, 1900s. And they're sitting on the hood and on the running board and they're piled inside. There might be, I think these are all ladies though. There might be a couple guys in there. I don't know. <laughs> Didn't think a magnifying glass. And it says... Um, shine like the whole universe is yours. That's a Tim Holtz journal spot. 
And then it's blank on the inside. There's nothing on the inside. And you have the envelope with it. So you're getting some of my favorite photos here. But it's time. It's time. You always know when it's time to pass them on to a new home. These, I am convinced that our art has its own journey. We don't know who's going to get it next and where it will go from their life, you know. Hopefully it will survive, but it may not. We don't know. Here's the other side and more photos. I do have my little Penelope stamp carving right here. Now I've, I uh, signed it and I put my name, the Marriottier, and this is this is Penelope, my pincushion doll. She's ready to be carved again in a new stamp, but here's my pincushion doll. And uh, she has been my studio mascot for years and years now. And she just sits here and supervises my work. <laughs> uh, I use her. She holds my pins and needles for me. I got a little tag here that was made by Mina. And it says for Penelope on there. And it's a little scissors and a little floral bling on there. But you are getting some more vintage photos that I mount that I mounted and matted. I put a piece of fabric uh, in between some cardstock. And these are vintage photo corners that I also purchased at the Defy auction. And I thought these are perfect for this. So when I buy something at the auction, I very well, I very may well use it and return it back to be auctioned off on some piece. Now this is a grandma standing outside of her house. She's got this wonderful cape on. I'll bet that's a silk cape. And these are no relation to me. These are photos that I got at thrift stores and and I used to antique a lot. I don't do that much anymore. I like to go look, but uh, that's when these photos did not cost a lot. And this beautiful lace came from Kathy at Kathy Worlds and Friends, but in order for me to put it back in here, I do have to fold it back on the side and the bottom. So just to let you know, whoever purchases this, this is of a mountain in Colorado. And what is under here is really map fabric um, but you can't tell it very much because the photo covers most of it and on this one I have a vintage photo of a man playing golf out on the golf course and then the fabric is some of that Tim Holtz cigar fabric and this one did I talk about this one this was the top one and lady sitting out on her front porch it looks like she's got a crocheted blanket or something over her over her legs over her knees so these photos will let me fold this back up here these photos will go back into this side over here and then also my little Penelope card and so they'll fit in here oh do I have something else oh I have another look I have some more buttons stuck in there. I forgot that I put those in there. But they will go to, they will go, and we'll just put them right back here in the pocket. You might have to put these in a little bit at a time to get them, to get them going straight. This one is pretty wide. Just put him in first. There we go. And remember to fold this lace. If you get this journal, remember to fold that lace back. And put those in. And my buttons, vintage pearl buttons, I believe. No, I don't know if they're pearls. It's got a guarantee written on the bottom of it. And then my little card telling you that I created this fabric journal. Now we're flipping to the last page. And the last page is this beautiful rose, pink rose, vintage hanky. And, of course, here's my tab. And this fabric is beautiful. This was from a silk scarf, I believe. This was sent to me by Kathy. And this unpainted wooden button and some lace across there. I have some more of this music lace, music notes and 
the is that a clef sign and the little daisies down at the bottom i just love this lace and inside of this pocket i have a larger tag that's all simplicity pattern this is pattern tissue on the back and i pulled this out of a needlework magazine spring 1933 enables you to dress smartly um, simplicity and an unpainted button and a piece of fabric that Kathy sent. You flip it over, it says this spring fashion book. And here's this came out of the Needlecraft magazine, too. It's a quilt block. And I've got some it's supposed to be red, but it's really pink <laughs> around the edges. And so that fits into this pocket like that. And it's a repeat on the last page with the I just had to put this in here. I just had to put it in there. Same same uh, technique as I did over on this page. And here's the tag that goes in here. It's a young it's a young lady. And that happened to be a sleeve pattern piece, seam allowance, placement for something. And painted button. I have some fabric ties up here and on the back is a quilt piece more pattern clutch down on it and that goes on this side so and then this is the back again we've talked about that so there is this little fabric journal it is chunky it is chunky uh, I don't have a closure for it I decided against putting a closure on it but it's for display. This is not a journal that you would work in. This is a display type journal uh, that you would put out and on one of your shelves in your studio, perhaps. So it's it's for display. I had more I wanted to put in and I could not fit it in. So what did I do? I took this pattern and made an ephemera pack. Let's put the journal aside for a moment. So here is, and I want this pattern pack. If Care Auctions is up, off separately, tell her, no, 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 they go together. They go together because what I have in here are things that I could not fit in here. <laughs> the journal would be this fat. The journal would be this fat. So you have some things to play with. I have some bobby pin embellishments up here that's just barely holding this fat envelope. It's made from a pattern, the outside of the pattern. I put washi tape around it and because to hopefully hold it, but I can see it's doing a little, it's, it's struggling to do its job. And these beautiful roses came from Kathy. Uh, this is a butternick pattern, butterick pattern. I always say butternick but it's better Rick and it looks like some maybe 1950s or 60s in style. And on the back, I have a piece of, of uh, upholstery trim here. Isn't that beautiful? I'm going, oh, that's what I'll do with that. And here is another button tag or a little findings tag. Probably had a charm or something on it that I just decorated up and stapled it to the flap. What's inside? Well, let me show you. Let me show you what's inside. You open it up here. It pulls out pretty easy. Pulls out pretty easy. Let's just set this here. So let's start at the bottom. I have a postcard that I made several weeks ago, but never finished the back. And here it is. So you can either use this for a mini journal or an ATC cut it down for an ATC, or just put it in your art journal, whatever. This is Tim Holtz tissue paper right here. And on here, I so wanted to get these ladies in here, but they would not fit into those pockets. So I just folded up. This is from the Needlecraft magazine. I'm going to send you the vintage ladies. Um, this is a 1931 Needlecraft magazine the magazine of home arts and so you get five vintage ladies here that got their style patterns down here they were probably selling those dress patterns and then there's some vintage advertising look at that watch the top tip top 
watch and a bread and board and a knife and double boiler bake dish a blanket for dolly beads merkin mercolized wax keeping skin young be a nurse lower prices on style queen coats and don't send one penny both pairs are a dollar 98 how fun it is to look at these old magazines. So you get that and the postcard. And then you will get some of the, you'll get the directions for this Betterick pattern. The sewing directions. This is fun for art journaling. And this is not the entire pattern. I sent you the ones that were not crumbled up. So these were not cut apart or used, I believe. So this is not the entire pattern. If you think you want to sew something from it, you probably have to invent something to go with it. Now, in this little pack, I have another page of vintage hankies. I think there are three pages here. And these are animals again. Look at that little kitty. This is a vintage handkerchief. And I apologize for the coughing and sneezing or anything that's going on in the other room. Uh, it always happens when I'm recording, but there you go. Um, lots of birthday wishes, little vintage hankies. You flip over here. This is, I love this poodle. <laughs> you know, a little French poodle there. Every birthday more and more. Je t'adore. I think that's, I adore every birthday more and more. Little vintage hanky. This one is for an elegant birthday. Go out and raise a little hell. It's got a a little she devil on there. <laughs> I guess that's not an animal. I guess you could call her an animal. And here's get well quick little kitties there. <laughs> and over here are some little squares. Um, get well soon, hankies. We might need to send some of these. We might need to make some hankies for get wells of the way our world is going, huh? And here is a vintage um, hanky, that handkerchief that I could not fit in here. And I thought, I'm just going to send it to him. So inside of here, I have three skeins of, this is satin, I believe, ribbon. Satin ribbon. I've never used it. I got a whole package of it at a flea market or a thrift store someplace. I didn't buy this new. But look at those colors. They just go with this whole theme. And here's your little vintage hanky. Let's fold it out here show you. It's got some tears in here. This is meant to be used for crafting. Um, I didn't use it in here because I wanted neater hankies, but I just thought, well, I'll send it, send it in here and maybe they can use it in their art journaling. So I just put these in here like this. So you're getting that in your ephemera pack. And then you're getting all of this washi tape that I made here. These are the pieces that I cut them off of. So you can see what's inside of these packs is some old world fabric, some red fabric. Here's some bugs, and butterflies, and beetles. There's a frog there. Here's some batik, kind of golds and tan batiks. Some old time watches, pocket watches, some floral, yellow and green. And then on the inside here is some map. There's my map fabric there. And then on here, we have some of the really pretty floral that I think just coordinates with this entire theme of the vintage hankies. So you're getting those to play with. And then you have some of this little lace that I used on those fashion tags. I just thought I'd put them in there. Uh, I'll put these in last. And you're getting some button cards. These are more vintage. Um, this is a Sears button. This is probably 1980s, 70s. Same with this. These are just button cards. Cost 29 cents, though. I don't think you could get them for 29 cents. Still has some little wires there that these two buttons they only needed two buttons <laughs> oh. and then here's one with two red buttons on it majesty quality latest style and your little lace 
and here's some pretty stick to craft trim but you probably you could probably iron that down if you wanted but um, you don't have to I think you could sew that on too and last we have two cards I'm not sending the envelopes with these these are just the cards this is a painting the girl with the umbrella uh, by Monet kind of impressionistic and it's a blank card and it has Monet on the back you get two of those so there we go that's what's inside of your your ephemera pack that I want to attached to this fabric journal, I couldn't get everything in. I could not get everything in. I can hardly get it all in this fabric envelope. If I kind of shake it down this way, then I have room to kind of put these over on the sides here. Yeah. Like that, and fit them in. And they'll fill up the, the spaces. Like that, like that, and like that. And this flaps down. And again, with these are bobby pin embellishments. This is what I like. They're the long bobby pins. These are not short bobby pins. These are the longer ones. If you do these, same theory as you do your paper clips with the ties and I do a different style of of embellishment too but for these I just want it but open up your bobby pin before you clip it onto your page and I'll tell you these have to work to hold this packet closed they have to work and we're just going to put it right down there right down in there and then the other one over here Yeah, sometimes I pinch those curved ends tight, but just open up your bobby pin. This has got a button, and I believe I got this button from Violet Johnson. She's the lady who donated all those postcards to Carehart. So she sent me some vintage buttons. Let's see if I can put that on the other way so that the button's facing the front. So here is my contribution to the little fabric art journal. Four or five of us are doing these fabric art journals. I think Care auctioned a couple off last month. So here they are. How fun it was to do these. Now, I want to tell you, this is not all, everything that I'm sending to Care. But I'm going to stop this video because I don't want to show you now what else I'm sending. I want it to be a surprise at the auction. But I will film it. I'll film a, a, a review of it. And after it auctions off, then I will make that video go live. So I hope that you've enjoyed this. Uh, I wish you all well. I really do think that the person who wins this, let me tell you what. When this auction's off, I'm turning off my laptop. I'm not going to watch. Uh, Care starts these at a certain price, but I can't watch. I can't watch. I'll, I'll go peek after it's all sold and everything. So, uh, but I do think you're getting the value for your money. And I buy things at the auction, and everything that I get, I'm very happy with. I'm very happy with. I use them all the time. So look in the description box below for information about the Disabled Artists Foundation. Go visit her website. Come to some of the auctions, even just to watch. But I tell you, it won't be long because the things are cheap and they're worth it. So uh, thank you to Kathy at Kathy Worlds of Friend for starting this whole process of doing projects for care. Thank you for inviting me to participate. And I will see you the second week of April. Bye for now.